functional point on who we got tested, why we got tested, and what some of those results were. And how did I screw up the test? Another thing I thought I could um, go over a little bit with you guys is I had mentioned, uh, this is honestly like a month and a half ago or two months ago, um, that I was going to do some DNA testing. And I did actually get those results back um, and it's all in the system already. So I'll turn the camera around and I'll point out who we got tested, why we got tested, and what some of those results were. And how did I screw up the test? Because I did screw up on one test, actually a couple of tests because one animal did not get tested at all. But we will start in the bullpen. As just a broad overview of what we tested for, there's a, a number of things that you can test for. There's all their genetic traits uh, going back to like performance wise as far as um, that's related to all their EPDs. Um, that's a very general um, one and what it'll do is actually boost their EPDs, their expected progeny differences, telling us you know, like I can talk more to like, say this guy, our state of war, you know, he's, you know, he's out. State of war is a calving ease bull with good performance. Um, and he's out of a cowboy cut, which is a more of a moderate birth weight, but performance bull. And you know, what, is, what are those, e, what does that genetic testing for the EPDs do to us, do for us? It kind of gives us a little bit of a, little bit of assurance or a little bit of um, a boost to the accuracy of those EPDs and adjust them a little bit. I don't know if they're necessarily adjusted yet in the system. I forgot to ask that question, um, but it'll help kind of boost the accuracy of what those actual numbers are. Uh, the The other thing, you know, so it'll, it'll do that for any of the ones that we did. So actually all the bulls that we tested, I tested these three bulls. Um, black bruno in the back there uh we had a little bit of a mishap uh first round of shots he's got all his shots but when i took the test or when i took the samples um he kind of slipped through the shoot a little bit so we had a little mishap so he is not tested i'm not super worried about that the only thing probably would be uh his pole gene for horns but most likely i mean he is pulled you put him on pole cattle it's going to be just fine. He's going to be great for those people. Um, but all the bulls that I tested are actually now technically approved. If I wanted to get any one of these three guys collected um, and use them as AI service, then I could do that. They're actually approved for that because their genetic data is in the system. And then I picked out some specific traits that I wanted to test for. Uh, and this goes along with the other one that we tested. I tested one heifer and that was our little full blood. Little Lily over here, she got tested. And the reason I wanted to test her specifically was I wanted to know, is she, I know she's pulled, but is she heteropulled? Does she still carry the horn gene where she potentially could have horns in the future? Or is she homopulled where all of her resulting progeny will have no horns? And I wanted to do that with the other guys too. The other one, <clears throat> I was really hoping for our bankroll to be homopolled because Deja is homopolled, his mom. Um, but he ended up being heteropolled, which is fine. Uh, doesn't doesn't downgrade him a whole lot. I just I, I really like the way he's come he's coming around. I like his depth, his his length. He's pretty he's a pretty chill dude too. All of these calves got tested for um, the horn gene. They also got tested for whether they're diluter, uh, which means they, like if, especially if you would breed, say, say if uh, one of our full bloods was bred to black, cat, black cows uh, and he was a diluter carrier and he got bred to, a, especially a black one, a black cow, that was a diluter carrier. You could possibly get grays, and that's just not um, grays. Or we used to actually get like the chocolate color uh, when we had uh, originally had some black Angus, and then put 
uh, purebred Simmentals on it that obviously had diluter genes in them. We used to get grays, gray, a couple of grays, and we would get like the actual chocolate color, look like a chocolate milkshake um, from that result. But we wanted to test for that. Uh, the mistake I made was actually for this guy. Um, obviously, I don't, I don't care about being homo, homo black or hetero black with our full bloods because obviously they're red. Um, and when I was picking all the stuff and just selecting it in the spreadsheet, I did diluter, I picked diluter test for him, but I needed to pick the hair coat and I didn't for him. So I don't know if he's hetero black or homo black because I know about three generations back there's red in his past. Um, I would assume, I can make a pretty good assumption he's probably homo black, but I'm not sure. Uh, cause his grand dam was black. His mom's out of cowboy cut who's homo black. And then state of war is homo black. But obviously still don't know. And then we don't know about him obviously cause he wasn't tested. He tested, um, uh, he is diluter free, tested diluter free. So that's great. Uh, that's in, in the, uh, in the full blood fleck world, uh, being diluter free is definitely a plus. Um, cause I would, and I would definitely agree with that, especially if you're selling and trying to sell full bloods to, you know, people who either have Angus or, uh, black based cattle. Um, they don't want those off colors. Uh, they want they want either a especially if somebody has Angus they want those black calves but they want the power uh, from a full blood and that's and knowing that they have a, a diluter free bull that's definitely an adder for them and then our little Bravo bull he tested diluter free I knew that he would be um, hetero pulled because um, Joey his mom uh, she is horned and HP Bravo was homo pulled. So he is pulled. He is also skur pulled, which means he has little, just real little nubbins. I mean, they're like, if they're a quarter inch long, I can barely even grab onto them, but they wiggle. You know, they're like the tip of your finger and they'll just sit there and wiggle. Uh, a horn will actually be solid at his age, um, but a skirt will actually wiggle in there. So you know it's not actually attached. It has blood vessels going to it, so it'll grow really, really slowly. Uh, Bruno also had had skurs too. And by the time we sold Bruno, they were like two inches long and they actually kind of like curled along his head. So they were kind of flat to his skull. So you didn't really see them very much. Um, and especially when his hair and his head is longer, uh, you didn't really notice them either. But. <clears throat> Uh, skurs aren't a big deal. He's still pulled. Uh, we've had skur pulled bulls in the past, and they're it, honestly, I think we had one skurred calf out of like. Well, now with Bruno being uh, a skur pulled bull too. Other than Horny out here, um, there's Horny, and then we had one calf from another bull. So probably 50 calves, two skurred bulls. We've had two calves that had resulting skurs or horns, and that's about it. All the rest all pulled. So uh, skurred bulls to me are, are a non-issue. Uh, so then the testing for this girl, as she nibbles on her fresh corn stalks, uh, she is she tested hetero pulled. Um, there was a 25% chance that she would be homo pulled. I knew she was pulled. She's smooth pulled. She does not have skurs. So I tested her for the pull gene. She is hetero pulled, not homo pulled. That's fine, not an issue. And she is also diluter free. So she tested diluter free. And then she is actually, if we actually really liked her in the future, as she starts producing, if we wanted to use her as a donor cow, then she is also approved and in the system for being a donor cow. And then you also get, um, you know, like I talked about the EPDs and, and all that stuff. Uh, so part of the reason for testing is to enhance some of those EPDs, which 
are a piece of the puzzle. I, I consider them a good piece of the puzzle for selecting an animal, especially if there's a lot of data to back up those numbers. And then the genetic testing is just uh, an added piece of that puzzle to enhance those EPDs and numbers. But you still gotta look at performance. You gotta look at how the calf itself has performed. You gotta look at how mom has performed and you gotta look at how dad has performed. So when we pick out, when I pick out bulls and me and dad talk about what bulls we're gonna use. Now, dad will give me some grief about saying this, but I do most of the bull selection, um, but I do go over it with them. And I talk about why I'm picking this bull, why I wanna use it on this calf and stuff like that. And I'll go for a very balanced animal. If they, if I want add a little more length to that animal, I pick a bull that's got a little more length. If I want to bring it, bring its frame down a little bit or bring its frame up a little bit, we select for that as well. Um, if I want a little more calving ease in that next resulting calf, or if I want more milk or something, you know, you can just you can pick all of those, and there's data out there to do that. Um, there isn't as much, I think, and it's not really a knock on uh, the full blood and Fleckve world. Uh, because I and I and I'm getting into it and I'm kind of I'm still learning even though I've been kind of in it for a couple of years now but just learning how it's it's done but I I have a feeling that in the past there hasn't been as as much detail in the data done for the full blood world as there has been for the pure blood uh, side of uh, the Simmental world um, not that there's anything wrong with that because it, it does force you to look at the actual performance of the animals and who they come from. You know, what's the performance of dad? What's the performance of mom? Um, and it just forces you to look at that in more detail, which is also very good because it then kind of opens your eyes to say, hey, instead of just looking at EPDs on all our purebreds, you know, you gotta look at the performance of mom and dad. What are the actual numbers? is that bull that I want to put on my heifers, is he actually producing small calves for heifers? Or is he just producing, or is his numbers just really good and he's not necessarily doing what the numbers say he's doing? So there's all of that research that goes into that. And that's where all the DNA, uh, DNA testing is, is going to help. And I want to do more of that. I would like to at least get that DNA data for our full bloods and I might start testing, you know, like we got Barb, I'll probably take a sample of her, I'll probably take a sample of Cora. Um, honestly, all of our full bloods, is it gonna cost me a little bit of money? Yes, uh, but is it going to potentially enhance the data behind that animal and then help resulting calves going forward? I think so, and that is my goal. Because uh, right now, what we'll do every year is I report all of our cows and our calf performances in the Simmental Association through total herd enrollment. Gives me a little bit of a discount on our registrations, um, but then it gets all the animals in there. And I've actually thought about upping that level so that I get EPDs for all of our calves and not just the ones that I, that I register. I would kind of like a little bit more of that info to back it up, I don't want to DNA test every single calf that we that we keep, um, just because it it was like seventy five dollars per calf, and right now, not really at that point. I mean, there's a couple of calves out here that I wouldn't mind doing that for, uh, just to kind of back that you know again back that data up. But uh, I think starting with our full bloods, um, getting getting a little boost to their data is definitely a step in the right direction. Because the other thing is, is I've been taking, like all of our purebreds, we have been submitting their calves, registering, taking all that and submitting all that data for the last 15 years. Uh, so there's, there is a lot of data backing up our animals, just not in a DNA sense. So, so yeah, I just wanted to give you guys an update on how the testing went. How I screwed up so hopefully that help explains that why we did it what we did if you guys have any questions on that please let me know so let's get going on the rest of our day